What's up guys, welcome back to another video. It's Super Sandy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Sandy, I'm 24 years old and I'm so, so passionate about entrepreneurship, business, health, and basically just freedom. What I try to do here on this channel is make videos that help you learn from my own mistakes and adventures so that you can help design your own freedom. Today's video is gonna be really exciting because it's five hard questions you should ask yourself before you truly consider seeking the path of freedom. The path of freedom can seem cool on Instagram and cool all over the world, but it's actually very, very challenging. And so I wanted to prepare these five questions for you to ask yourself before you commit to this journey. Once you commit to this journey, there can be a lot of pressure that you put on yourself. And so I don't want you to shame yourself and I want you to understand that this journey is very, very difficult. So asking these five questions could possibly help you realize, wait a second, am I truly ready? And if I am going to go after it, then I understand that this is really, really hard and it's a learning process. So it's gonna take a long time and I shouldn't shame myself for hitting a bump in the road. It's all part of the process. And remember, if you like this video, make sure to like or subscribe. So question number one, do I understand the responsibilities of true freedom? Here's a great quote that summarizes this. Heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. This is a really great quote that was passed on to me by a mentor of mine, Richard Moore, when I was going through a difficult time. I basically was like, you know, super anxious and I posted about it on Instagram and he reached out to me and said, hey, like, we, sh we should speak, let's, let's hop on a call. We hopped on a call and he let me know that, again, heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. What he means by this is, you know, I, I pursued a life of freedom. I pursued a life of growth and leadership. And when you do that, a lot of responsibilities fall on your lap. And so when those responsibilities do, you can't just, you know, give up. You have to understand that you asked for this. You know, true freedom is designing a solution to every problem. It's not giving up every single time you get knocked down. And you should be asking yourself, am I ready to take extreme ownership over all of my actions? There's actually a great book called Extreme Ownership by Jocko Welling. I recommend you read it because that's exactly the mindset you need to take on in order to truly commit to the path of freedom. Every problem, every mess up, every mistake is your responsibility. Even if it isn't, you have to ask yourself, how did I get myself in this situation? How did I allow this to happen in my reality? And so anytime you hit a bump in the road, you can't blame anyone else but yourself. You can't say, oh, it was that person or it was this person. You have to take extreme ownership and that's where you can find freedom because in order to find true freedom, you have to be in control. Freedom is no one else can tell you what to do. So therefore, when you want something, you have to be prepared to seek it regardless of how challenging it is. Regardless of how many people try to get in your way, you can't say that is the person that is holding me back from my dreams. I am the person holding me back from my dreams. I have to go pursue it. Question number two, what does true freedom mean to me? Now, freedom, just like many labels, are kind of words that humans just kind of put together to communicate. And so if you're pursuing something like freedom or even success, you have to clearly define what it means to you. This can be a great way to manifest it, but also it's a great way of keeping yourself aligned so you don't get lost because sometimes we pursue freedom for outside validation. And so you have to really truly define what you want so that when you get there, you know you're getting close and that when you get there, no one else can take it from you. You. Make sure that you're not pursuing freedom for somebody else's validation because that too can be a very, very sticky trap. And I totally understand I've been there. I'm the type of person that I was seeking success and freedom for the validation of my family. And so every single time that I felt like I reached a level of success, they made me feel like I didn't just because they didn't see it. And so you have to allow yourself to be set up for success in the pursuit of freedom. Make sure that you're doing it for you so that you have control of the outcome and no one else can poo poo on your parade. And so what does this mean? Is this a certain weight? Is this a certain income? Is this a certain amount of vacations per year? What does it truly mean? It's different for everyone, but make sure you know what you want and make sure that it's what you want versus what someone else wants for you. Question number three, am I pursuing freedom for the right reasons? This one's a good one. Are you pursuing freedom just to escape your responsibilities? I've been asked this question a lot because I have a lot of mentors that are quite successful, at least in my eyes. And every time I go to them and I say, hey, I wanna go traveling, or hey, I want to go to the certain country, they're like, are you going for the right reasons? And this always confused me. I'm like, well, yeah, I just told you I wanna go to that country because I want more time for myself or I want more space. But then they help me understand by continuously asking this question that freedom can be found anywhere. 
To be truly free is to be in control of your own environment. And so if you feel like you're pursuing something to try to escape another, then you're not truly free and you're holding yourself back from your own success. A lot of people say they want freedom, but what they truly want to do is escape. Like I said previously, freedom is taking ownership over every single responsibility. If something doesn't go your way, you have to take ownership over why it's not. And so if you're pursuing freedom, the Instagram freedom, if you will, just to look cool and escape your responsibilities, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Freedom goes hand in hand with leadership. And so you have to be prepared to lead by example and do the work that most won't. Question number four, how have I handled freedom in smaller aspects? This is a very, very good question because to an extent, we're all free. It's just how we use those opportunities of freedom that we then earn the next level of freedom. There are many people that come to me when I work with them and they just say, well, Sandy, I don't have time to execute on your training. Well, how much time do you have? See, because for me, it's all a conversation of leverage. If you only have one hour, let's say you only have one hour that you can dedicate to training per week, how can we make that one hour turn into 90? That 90 into two hours, those two hours into four hours. And so as long as you can get your, your just your toe in the door, you can essentially work your way up. But if in that hour you do not take the leadership and say yes to the challenge, then you gotta really ask yourself, am I truly ready for freedom? Because true freedom is essentially doing what some can't do in an hour 24 seven. I remember when I first became self-employed, this was like a hard pill to swallow. It took me months, if not years, to learn this lesson. When I made the commitment to go self-employed, I thought I was gonna be free to do whatever I want. I thought the money was just gonna roll in. But then I realized, wait a second, dang it, if I'm not making money, I can't go to my boss and say, hey, I'm not getting paid. It's my responsibility. And so every single hour, every single minute counts. You have to use it wisely. And so I wasn't prepared for that responsibility, but through obviously through continuous, you know, pushing myself, I figured it out. But you gotta ask yourself, how do I handle freedom in the smaller aspects? If you work five days a week, what do you do on those two days? Some people think that they need the entire week to become free, but really, again, it starts with leverage. So if you have two days off, or even just one day off, or even just six hours off every single week, what are you doing in those hours? When you're truly free, how do you tell the universe what you're worth? Because if in those six hours you just escape, then you're not ready for freedom. And question number five, am I ready for the uncertainties that freedom brings? True freedom is so, so unpredictable. It's being ready for chaos. It's being in charge and facing chaos. Freedom can be very, very scary. That's why most do not pursue it. They pursue a little fraction of it. And even in those small fractions, like we spoke previously, they just escape. They choose comfort. Like I said, freedom goes hand in hand in leadership. And so if you're pursuing freedom, understand that you're about to go through a metamorphosis. You're about to let go of your past life and commit to your new life. And in committing to this new life, freedom is, is, is chaos. Freedom is, is committing to the path of regardless of what my environment is, I'll turn it into what I need. I'll turn it into what I want. And so every single day, for example, I have to ask myself, am I ready to turn these ingredients into what I need? Or am I just gonna sit back and say, I don't have enough? It's a really, really big challenge. And so you have to be prepared to ask yourself this question. I learned from one of my coaches that freedom is essentially a surrender game. When you are in the process of pursuing a life that's better aligned than what you can even imagine, you kind of have to just surrender the chaos, surrender to your power, surrender to your greatness. Even when you feel like you're not in charge, understand that it's all part of the process and subconsciously and unconsciously, you're just designing all this to make yourself better. Facing the fear, surrendering to your power, surrendering to your intuition, that's you committing to the path of freedom because regardless of what someone else tells you, regardless of what the exterior world tells you, you inside are in charge. And so throughout the surrender game, I was really, really scared. I was like, man, is this what I should be doing? There was no signs of certainty. And so I pursued validation, but that never was the answer because what I wanted in my heart was true freedom. And so regardless of what the exterior world looks like, regardless of how hard it is, I have to be ready to face the fears and choose freedom. Now, I know this conversation of freedom can be very, very long winded and it's very, very complicated. It's hard to think about because like I said, it's different for everyone everyone. But understand that, you know, pursuing freedom, being able to say, wow, I am free. What does that mean? I am free. I have no shackles. I have nothing telling me that I am bounded and cannot do something. So you have to be ready that regardless of when something's challenging you, you turn it into your superpower. You turn it into your escape plan. And that can be very, very hard. It takes a lot of introspection, a lot of looking into yourself to face those fears, those limiting beliefs so that you can be free in any moment, regardless of the circumstance. This is the path of a lot of growth. 
you know, trust yourself. If you haven't watched my video on unlocking intuition, I, I highly recommend it. That video can help you unlock some tools to calm yourself down, especially if you're on the path of freedom. The path of freedom is essentially this huge alchemical fire that is just burning away all your weaknesses so you can find your true strength. If you have any questions, please let me know, comment them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I make videos twice a week talking about how you can be better equipped for freedom. Whether that be business tactics, mental tactics, physical tactics, I try to cover as many things as possible, especially spiritual tactics, so that you can find a life that's better aligned. I really appreciate you watching this video and I would love some feedback, so please comment and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Subscribe. Watch another video. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs>